Hare Krishna. Ask me if I was planning to make a YouTube video today. I wasn't. You know what I mean? I wanted to do a little more research on this topic because it's a very, very important topic. But inspiration hit me because yeah, there's a project hallway like how Nas be rapping. Smoking bloods on the project hallway, you get nice all day. All them rappers be always talking about the project hallways. A lot of things happen in the project hallways, including YouTube videos that are necessary to take the people to the next level of elevation. And when we talk about elevation, in a couple of days now, matter of fact, happy 2017, first of all, because my last video was called election season. Well, this one should actually be called inauguration day. See, everybody get ready. This is training day. I swear, I hope I don't get no calls. I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode. Let me see if I can. Nah, yeah, I'm gonna put it on airplane mode right now. Boom. No calls, y'all. Okay, good. Hurry, hurry, bowl. So check it, right? Yeah, inauguration day is coming up. We're about to get a new president. I'm not gonna dedicate this video to Donald Trump because he doesn't deserve it. But I gotta give Trump one shout out. <laughs> I gotta give Trump and I gotta give Cuomo a shout out. Why? Because they from Queens. And y'all saw my video already. Queens is the best borough, you know what I mean? It's a known fact. So the bosses come from Queens. All right, now that that's established, let's keep it moving. So inauguration day is in a couple of days, right? And, you know, a lot of people are upset. A lot of people are not feeling Trump. They're looking for freedom. They're looking for salvation. They're looking for liberation. So this video should be about liberation. What is liberation? First, let's start on a material basis. Liberation is freedom from want or oppression, freedom from poverty, freedom from the things you don't like. That's called liberation. Ret being returned to your motherland or being returned to your original culture, that's a form of liberation. So these, you know, like I said, getting away from poverty, that's liberation from being poor. So these are material concerns that deal with the five senses, the five elements, everything that makes up your little, your little mundane body, that deals with material liberation. These things are necessary if you want to live a comfortable material life. And there ain't no problem with that, you know. But once again, there's higher forms of philosophy that go beyond our material needs. However, when we're really dealing with liberation from the Vedic standpoint of view, it is wise if we accept the Vedic definition of liberation. Because in the Vedic system, there are three forms of acceptable information one form of acceptable information is called anumana anumana before we go there let's go to prataksha prataksha comes is very closely related to a word called prakash prakash means manifested right so prataksha is that which is evident to your senses so prataksha is like you know i could say the sun is shining and we go look outside and we see with our eyes. So I see you, you see me, that is prataksha. That is something that is directly perceivable by the senses. That is one form of acceptable information, according to the Vedas, prataksha, that which is directly perceivable. Then there's another form of information that is acceptable and it's called anumana. Anumana comes from the root word manu, manu, to think or the mind. So anumana comes when you get into hypothesis. In other words, if I hear, if I'm, in a, if I'm in an area where there's a lot of water bugs, a lot of roaches, the big roaches that fly, and you hear wings flapping in the dark, and you know you don't have no bird in your room, then anumana, my hypothesis is that there's a big roach flying around in the room. And everybody know, everybody is gangster till the cockroach start flying. So once again, we got a noumena, which is mental or hypothesis. I make a hypothesis. I smell something bad. I'm on a bus. I'm going to assume someone passed gas. That is hypothesis. I, I hypothesize that someone farted on this bus and it smells very bad. And then, 
most importantly is Shabda Brahman. Shabda Brahman. Shabda, Shabda Brahma is like the sound of the Vedas. The Vedas ain't Indian, the Vedas ain't European, the Vedas ain't African. All of these people had a piece of the knowledge, but remember the Vedas were revealed when Lord Brahma was existing in a state of triple stage darkness. There was no night, there was no day, there was no hot, there was no cold, there was no water, there was no dry earth, there was no nothing except unmanifested state of cosmic non-bliss. Because Lord Brahma was existing in a state of fear when he was in that stage of triple state darkness. Then he heard that voice that said, Tapas, Tapasya, penance and austerity. It came from within. So Lord Brahma, Lord, Lord Paramatma, which is the indwelling super soul inside your chest, there's two people right now. There's you, the self, the person, and there's the super soul who's traveling with you from life to life. So when you need guidance and there's no other way for you to get this information, that's when Paramatma comes and manifests and he speaks to you in the form of himself or externally in the form of a spiritual manif master manifested outwardly. So Lord Brahma received instructions first from Shabda Brahman, the sound, the sound. In the beginning was the word. It gave him instructions. They say that as Lord Vishnu breathes out, as his breath comes out, the waves coalesce into the form of sound and that sound is actually the Vedas. The Vedas is the blueprint for this matrix and the Vedas is the blueprint for us to remember Lord Vishnu. The only purpose of the human form of life, the human body is Vishnu Yagya. Vishnu sacrifice. We gotta do sacrifices for Lord Vishnu. Once again, the sacrifice could be that of the mind. We could offer our mind and all of our possessions. We could offer prayers. We could offer our ears to hear. We could offer our hearts and our minds to remember. We could offer our mouth to speak about Krishna. So there's so many different processes. We could become friendly towards the Lord. We could, um, oh my goodness. We could look at the deity inside the temple. So there's about nine different forms of sacrifice at least for Lord Vishnu. So the purpose of this advanced human form of life, because remember, an animal has consciousness. Wherever you see consciousness, whether it's an insect, whether it's a bacteria, whether it's a ghost or it's a duppy or it's a ghoul or it's a human or it's a white man or a black man or a woman, wherever you see consciousness in this universe, there is the presence of Brahman. God realization is in three levels. God realization comes in the form of Supreme Brahman, which is his energy manifested. When you say this wall is Krishna, you are correct, because if you go to the smallest point of the atomic structure, you will see Paramatma is actually inside the center of every atom. I don't know if I mentioned this in another video, but these so-called simple African backwards people from Akan tribe, the Akan people of Ghana, have these symbols. These symbols are called Andingra. Yeah, I think I did mention it. So the Andingra symbols, like you have Jin Yami, you have um, adaptability, you have so many symbols, Sankofa, and when the scientists from the Large Hadron Collider looked at, from CERN labs in Switzerland, I believe, they looked at the smallest particles of the universe and found out that these symbols, the Andingra symbols, are the foundation of the very universe that we live in. So when these African people talk about a Nazi, the spider, and you see the Kente cloth, the Kente cloth represents the different weaving of the cosmic energy which makes up this matrix that we live in. So these Africans were in some deep science. Anansi the spider is known as the architect of the universe because his web is that which holds it together. Where do we hear this word web? Where do we hear this string theory? In the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. And that's how they say Gita, Bhagavad Gita, which means song of God. In there, Krishna said that all things are supported on me and resting on me like pearls on a string. So Krishna, and when you hear it in the Sanskrit language, you can hear the mathematical code for all of the string theories that they are currently finding out in CERN labs. I'm trying to tell you all there's a connection with Krishna, 
the Vedas, the African science, everything that they're discovering, CERN labs, it's all connected. It's about to come back full circle because Osiris is coming. Osiris is the great Westerner, the Lord of Perfect Black, and he's going to come to the West. He's going to come out of the West, and he's going to rule again according to the comedic prophecies. I've been reading a beautiful book called Tales of Ancient Egypt by Roger Lancelin or something like that. It's on my Facebook in a photo album called Things to Read. So let me backtrack now. So Lord Brahma was there in a stage of triple stage darkness and he heard the Shabda Brahman. He heard the word, the sound. And that sound caused him to understand how to manifest the whole entire universe. So where are we going with this video? The subject is liberation. Quickly, I would like to run down some of the different forms of liberation according to the Vedic standard, and that's the standard we want to accept. Because just like you said, doo-doo is unclean. No matter where you go on the planet Earth, doo-doo is unclean. But we accept the word of the Vedas because the Vedas is the most advanced knowledge that comes. It came before even Brahmaloka, the highest planet in the material universe, or one of the highest planets is called Brahmaloka. I don't even know, I think Dhruva Loka is actually higher than Rama Loka, and even higher than Dhruva Loka is the planet of his mother. His mother got an even better position in the material world than Dhruva. So these are the highest, like when they do um, the Gaya Tree Mantra, they're talking about these different Lokas as spheres. They talk about Om Bu, that's the one that we live on. Om Bhuvaha, Om Swaha, Swaha is Swargalok, that's what you call heavens, or Christians, that's what they call the heavens, is Swargalok. Swaha, Om Maha, Maha is Maharloka. Om Janaha, that's Jana Loka. Om Tapaha, Tapaha is a deep planet. That's where the people who have done so much penance and austerities that they got superpowers. And Om Satyam, the purest planet in the material world. And then it goes on in a long form to say, Om Tat Savitor Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Dhiyo Yonaha Prachorayata So that is Gayatri Mantra. That's a creation mantra right there. But let's get beyond creation. Let's get into liberation. What do you want? Well, here's my Christmas wish list. If I had a choice, my first pick would be the causeless service of Krishna from life to life to life. It don't matter if I'm in a human body, demigod body, demon body, insect body. I just want to serve the Lord causelessly with love and devotion and in the state of reciprocity because I'm selfish. I want to give Krishna something, but I want something in return. But what I want in return is not necessarily made of material. But I'm still selfish. I care about my ultimate benefit. My material benefit is being taken care of by Krishna's agents and agencies. Understand? But my spiritual needs, only Krishna can reciprocate that. So I serve Krishna because I keep hearing Prabhupada talking about reciprocal. Bhakti is reciprocal. Reciprocal. So we ain't giving Krishna something and not getting nothing in return. So my Christmas wish list is, boom, first step. Give me causeless devotional love and service for the Lord life after life after life. And if I can't get that, then yeah, I would like to go home, back home to Godhead. No more reincarnation, no more death, no more birth. And if I can't get that, then we got to start talking about liberation. There are different kinds of liberation. There's charshti. Charshti liberation is when you are so opulent that you have just as much money as Krishna, just as much opulence. You know what I mean? That's Sharshti. That's when you are so rich that, I mean, demigods got to come to you to borrow money and stuff like that. That's real talk. That's called Sharshti liberation. You get opulent like the Lord. Then you get Samipya. Samipya is another form where you are kind of, what's good, what's good? How you feel, you all right? Chilling, yeah, I'm doing my YouTube thing real quick. 777 million views by tomorrow. You know how we do. Yeah, so check it, right? So you got Samipya. Samipya is when you are actually getting close association with the Lord, one-on-one. -on -one. You get to spend time with Krishna. That's Samipya liberation. You have another form of liberation called Sarupya. Rupa. 
rupa nuga form form rupa rupa sarupa you get the form very similar to krishna the only difference when you go to the vaikunta planets boy this is such a vast subject i would love to talk about it but let's check it out when you go to the vaikunta planets you actually get a body just like Lord Vishnu, or you can even get a, a body like Lord Krishna on certain worlds. The only difference is that Krishna has about three other attributes that we don't have. He has this hair on his chest that's called Srivats, and Srivats is the home of Lakshmi. That's why when, when Lord Vishnu got kicked in his chest, Lakshmi was very offended because Lakshmi didn't kick the man back. Vishnu didn't kick the man back. Vishnu went and rubbed his feet. Vishnu was like, oh! I knew your feet hurt because you have kicked my chest and it's hard like a razor. Come, let me rub your feet. What have I done to offend my devotee? What have I done to offend my servant? And Lakshmi is like, boy, you crazy ass. What are you doing? Lord Vishnu, punish this man. He's offended me. But Lord Vishnu is so magnanimous, man. His attributes are unlimited. So like where we see hate, he only sees love. So you have this sarupya where you get a form similar to Lord Vishnu minus a few features. So there's no really jealousy or envy in the Vaikuntha planets because everybody looks good. Everybody has opulence. Everybody is doing good. The only difference is they're smart enough to know he is the Lord and I am the eternal servant. When you go a little higher than that, when you go to the Goloka Vrindavan realm, it ain't even, ain't even no more separation between the Lord. It's just loving reciprocity. So it's like, y'all are friends, man. You chilling with Krishna in Goloka Vrindavan in a village pastoral lifestyle because Krishna means to cultivate. So that's why his brother Balaram has a plow. These are cultivators. These are simple farmer people, everyday people. Y'all remember that song? Ah, and then continuing on. All right, cool. So you have Samipya, close association with the Lord. Sarupya, same form as the Lord. Sharshti is the opulence of the Lord. And then you have another form called Sayuja. Sayuja is when you actually lose your individuality and you go into the Brahman effulgence of the Lord, a place called Brahma Jayoti or Nirvana. Nirvana is not a one-way trip. Sometimes you return because it gets lonely because you get bored. And we are beings of desire and reciprocity. So a desire, a devotee doesn't even want any kind of liberation from the Lord. He just wants his causeless service life after life. But if he must have a choice, he's going to choose all of the other forms of liberation except that of Sayuja because you lose your individuality. It's like sitting in the sunlight. You become a firefly, a spark of light, and it's mad boring. It's nothing to do there, nobody to talk to. So eventually you cool down and you take rebirth back on the planet Earth. This is not something that people are guessing. This is not sentimentalism or fanaticism. This is Shabda Brahma. Brahman, the sound of Brahma, the sound of the Supreme Brahman told us that these are the things that happen when you get different forms of liberation. So who wants to be liberated? There are different processes of liberation. Yogi helps you to get to one form of liberation or another form of liberation. But my desire for everybody is that really you can enter into the realm of the relationship eternal reciprocity with the Lord. Let me tell y'all something, man. Krishna don't have to prove himself to me. He already did. He showed me, and you know, I'm gonna tell y'all something too. You will get a lot of communication from the Lord or his agents in the form of numbers. So watch them numbers. Angels are always sending you messages in the form of codes. And you just take whatever number. If you see a number that strikes you like 1155, and you know that your mother died at 11.55 p.m., maybe somebody's sending you a message. So you go to google.com, because Google is your friend, and you type in 11.55, right next to that you type in angelic numbers. And once you hit it in, you'll see the website, you click on the link, and it'll tell you what all of these numbers. Lately, a lot of people been seeing 111, 1111. I'll be, be seeing the, the strangest numbers. Now, this is personal. I don't like to talk about my personal business no more. I've matured a little, but this is personal. So I once was married, you know, and the lady that I married, her birthday was 12-3. It's 12-3, right? So that's one, two, three. 
Now for gamblers, one, two, three is snake eyes. I think I also mentioned this in a, um, another video. You lose when you, when you roll a one, two, three. But what was interesting was that I had met her on a January 23rd. So we seen that number one, two, three, two times in our meeting and we figured that we should go with it. You know, we went with it and we left with it. You know what I mean? But long story short, you know, that's, that's one, one sequence of numbers that numbers can give you signs that you're supposed to have some kind of karmic journey with somebody or you're supposed to end your karmic journey with somebody. So look for those numbers. Angels talk to you in the form of numbers, inspiration. Yo, Krishna is just amazing. The more I talk about Krishna, the more I talk about Krishna, the more he reveals itself to me. There's a verse in the Bhagavad Gita that says something to the extent that whoever spreads this message of this divine consciousness, this message of me, there is no one more dear to me than him and there is no one more dear to him than me. So Krishna is fair, his energy, his, his energy in the form of Supreme Brahman, the stone, all five elements. It's available to all of us to use equally and he'll give all of us equally. It doesn't matter if you're a demon, a demigod or a devotee, he's gonna take care of you. But he says, I got a special place in my heart for my devotees. Only my devotees really know me anyway. And that's why I had to go at Sarah Supersetti. Like I said, I don't got nothing personal against the dude. You know what I'm saying? Live your life, dude. You got mad knowledge. But yo, you can't, nobody can't talk about Krishna unless they're his devotee because Krishna said that himself. If you're not his friend and you're not his devotee, he's not going to reveal himself to you. So all you're doing is quoting, not you, but anybody. Anybody talking about Krishna and re relating Krishna to the Christ and, and this and that. You don't know Krishna because you ain't his devotee, you ain't his friend. Talk to somebody who actually knows Krishna. Somebody who works for Krishna all day. I'm yo all day, son. I'm on deck on Facebook. I'm talking about Krishna. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Tango. I'm, I'm on whatever gram, Instagram. You know, I don't sell grams, but I be on Instagram. I'm always talking about Krishna. I've decided to saturate my life with Krishna because he said, Prabhupada said, yo, your life will become Krishna eyes. And I'm here to tell you it's really true. My life has become Krishna eyes. I'm not perfect, but I'm becoming perfected. I'm far from perfect. I'm the lowest of the low. But guess what? People see something special in me. It may be inborn. It may have been cultivated over many lives. But I strongly suspect that ever since I've been chanting Hare Krishna and trying limping on this, even crawling or slithering on this path of devotional service, Krishna has definitely reciprocated to me according to his promise in the Bhagavad Gita. He said, whoever surrenders to me, I reward them accordingly. So whatever thing y'all special, y'all see in me, I don't think that I'm just so special. I just think that I'm, I've become magnetically attracted by the way Lord Balaram or Shankarshan is the power behind magnetism. And that in the Yoruba system, it comes out to Oshun. That's the power of magnetism. All of these deities are connected. Krishna has magnetized my life. And I know he can do the same for you. I know it's mad people going through mad problems. Every day on Facebook, I see another tragedy. This one, the mother, the, the aunt, the kidneys are failing. This one just lost his brother. This one just got shot. This one just lost their job. This one is coming with leukemia. Everybody got problems every day, but I do notice a shift in the consciousness. Shout out to Keno Brown. Everybody's starting to become vegan, vegetarian, and changing their diet. And everybody's, once you gotta understand, once y'all change your diet, once there's less animals being killed, the carbon footprint goes down. Once your carbon footprint goes down, nature begins to bounce back. So nature will bounce back the more people stop eating meat. I was gonna make another point along that line, but my head is so crazy right now and I'm just so mad amped. Like I said, I wasn't planning to make the video, but sometime Krishna just grabbed me by my neck and said, yo, go ahead and make that video, man. By the way, this right here, this, this is called black tourmaline. I wear it on my left side. Black tourmaline absorbs energy and transforms it into something good or beneficial. And on my right side, I wear black onyx. 
That means anybody sending snot balls at me, the snot ball just bounces right back at me. So you could use gems, that's subtle science. We're going into the realm of subtle technology. People are evolving, more and more vegetarians, less and less meat eaters. The carbon impact will be better. There will be less blood in your body, less adrenaline in your body, so you will act differently towards your neighbor and there will be less need for war. So not only does it affect you on a karmic level, but becoming like a vegetarian or a more conscious eater also affects you on a more practical level. That's why I love Krishna consciousness, because it's all practical. Man, I be having some thoughts, man. I say to myself, man, if I had Illuminati money, if I had trillionaire money, let me tell y'all something. It wouldn't be no more deserts on the planet Earth because I would have money to make cloud busters. You see, you got cloud busters, right? Cloud busters is a derivative of organite energy and you could put them somewhere and it will attract rain. But me, I will make cloud busters the size of cars and plant them in the desert, man. And you just get so much rain in the desert. Yo, the weather anomalies are crazy, by the way. Everybody get ready, start changing your diet because this is 2017, and for three years in a row, from 2016, 2015, 2014, the temperature has been hitting records around the planet Earth. So 2014 was the hottest year on record ever, ever since we kept tracking uh, temperatures. Then the next year beat that. 2015 was hotter than 2014. Then 2016 was hotter than 2015. Well, how hot can it get? Don't ask me. But you better get ready for the Surya Vamsa, the Solar Dynasty. Yo, I hope this video can help you all out. Find your way to liberation. If you can't find liberation, then go for the highest goal, which is love of God. And to begin that process, to get your heart soft, to get your pineal gland soft, all you gotta do is chant Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda. Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. That's God in his five parts. That's God. That's his extension or his, 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 his expansion. Lord Balaram Prabhu Nityananda. That is Lord Vishnu and Sadashiva in the form of Shri Advaita. Gadadhar is the Shakti or the Radharani energy of Krishna and Shri Vas. And Adi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda is the highest devotee, representative of the highest devotee and all of the devotees gathered here today. And in their name we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. I wish everybody the best. Peace. Shout out to Donald Trump only because you're from Queens. Don't be a fool. Hit me up if you need some advice. We can change this planet for the better. We can make America great again. But y'all gotta get off your high horse because you don't own nothing. You're a false proprietor. Those who carry the mentality of you and your ilk are false proprietors. Only Krishna owns everything. Give it back to who it belongs before it's taken from you by force and you find yourself begging for liberation because what goes around comes around. Haribo.